Oh, okay. Well, this is live radio, folks, and I am here with a legend in his own time, Michael Harris. How are you doing today? I thought you were going to say a legend in my own mind. Uh, well, no, know. I think you are a legend you're in your own time. You are far too kind, and I am so impressed. I, it, Anne and I have been talking for a few minutes, and what a wonderful station you have, and what a wonderful community. Well, thank you very much. I He'll have to invite you to come see us. I, I look forward to that. I look forward to that, because that's what, what I've learned about you and your station is what I believe radio is all about. I, I believe that radio should play a very important role in its local community. I think that local communities, uh, first of all, I like living in local communities. I live in a small New England town. I've been all over the country. I live Where in L.A. Live? I live in Longmeadow, Massachusetts, okay. which is uh, in western Massachusetts. It's far from Boston. It's sort of in the middle of nowhere. I Between went to Northfield, uh, Northfield School, Mount Hermon and Northfield in western part, Springfield. Right so outside you know of, that area. I do. Oh my gosh! <laughs> well, isn't it a wonderful place? Yeah, it's it it's is. probably not that different than uh, Greenwood. Yeah. It, it's probably very similar. Except we not it was cold. It's well, and no exactly. Snow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the spring, the springtime in New England, and the and the summer, and the summer's hot. The winters are horrible. This past winter was terrible, but spring and fall are beautiful. Absolutely. But, but you live in a beautiful state uh, yeah. that's, that's got the best of everything. <laughs> but uh, I, I was just going to say, uh, I love uh, the kind of station that, that uh, I've, as I've learned about you from uh, talking to you and uh, being on the show now, I think it's very exciting. It Maybe is someday exciting. I'll, someday I'll be there. I want to eat in that diner that you yeah, talked about. Yeah, the diner. Well, we'll serve you uh, uh, great homemade ham biscuits. Oh, How about wonderful. That? I mean, they're specially made. My husband makes them, and he actually won an award for these ham biscuits. Are you serious? I am serious. Right. He did. Well, I mean, we are award-winning people here. I mean... Very competitive. Well... <laughs> <laughs> That's good, yeah. good. I'm always up for a new hand. I, I love award-winning food. I yeah. mean, I, I've even eaten food that isn't award-winning award winning because I'm an award-winning eater. Well, yeah, you know? <laughs> it's good to enjoy good food. So, what are the big issues there? What are the big issues? Yeah, what are you dealing with? <sighs> what are we dealing with? Or is we're life just so with, pleasant no, that? Uh, no, we have issues that we're dealing with. But you know, I think basically, um, a lot of people have a concern whether AM radio is really where it's at, or is FM just the answer to everything? FM has its problems with the internet. I mean, yeah. I mean, all we media, stream on the internet too. Uh, yeah, so so you're equal in that regard. Right. I, I I think it depends on how many stations there are in the area and how many AM radios there are. Yes. I mean, you know, one of the things that I can't understand about the radio industry and, and the National Association of Broadcasters uh, that are always trying to, of course, protect radio in this digital era of exotic competition sure. is why aren't you promoting the uh, proliferation of that thing we call the radio? Right. Because if there are no radios, then what does it mean to be AM or FM? It, Correct. It, you, you need to have radios to have uh, it matters. Sure. Yes, exactly. So uh, if I, I would just hand out AM radios to everybody in town. Maybe I should do that. Well, maybe, maybe you should, should make with only my station on it. Well, that could be. <laughs> that, or make it, uh, make them sign a letter that if we take this radio for free, we will listen at least eighty percent of the time to your station. Well, there you go. But, I like it. But I think the future of of radio. I, th I think the future of all media based in the twentieth century is obviously challenged sure. by the digital era. And a lot of it depends on where you are. And a lot of it depends on, as I said, you know, what the customs and the habits are. If you lose the audience in your AM, it's hard to get it back. Sure. Uh, but if you serve the community, if you, if you put programming on it that is indispensable, that is absolutely needed, it will live longer. Sure. And, and uh, you know, in a time when, in a corporate era where uh, people measure success by quarters, right. by, you know, quarterly reports to stockholders, I would think 10 years or 15 years is an eternity. I don't think we're talking about 100 years or 50 years. I don't think that any, I don't think there'll be magazines. I don't think there'll be newspapers. Correct. I don't think there'll be television sets. They, remember, a TV set was a piece of furniture. Right. I, I think it's all converging into all kinds of weird gizmos. Do you have a smartphone? I think yes, I, I see do. one. I well, do, yeah. Okay, well, there's your uh, entire media world. Exactly. In a teeny little thing. Wouldn't you think that's science fiction if uh, you saw that 20 years ago? Well, just think of, uh, just think of um, uh, Spock 
and the tricorders and all the things. I mean, those are coming true day after day. As a matter of fact, I often refer to my uh, smartphone as a tricorder. Oh my God, I didn't know yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I that's my that's my joke. You okay. know, I'm going to use my tricorder on you, and you know, we're going to be go past the tri. Yeah, it's funny. The Star Trek stuff. We're going to be past it. Do you remember in the first uh, in st- the, the first uh, series, the Spock series, right. they would talk to each other on an intercom. Right. They would press a button on the wall and talk into it. Exactly. Then it wound up on their, you know, this. Right. And the reality Beam is, me up, Scotty. The, the reality <laughs> in the 24th century, they'll have a chip in their head and they're just going to twitch and they'll t- talk to each other tel- telepathically. It, the sci- the science reality is always far more advanced than what we predict. Correct. You know? Uh, yeah, but I worry about the Borg effect. Since we're into science fiction here, okay, well, I am the Borg. Okay, well, I, I, I see that you're very, very um, enlightened, and I see that you're very, very um, evolved. So I will, I will throw some heavy stuff at you. Oh, my God. I believe that we are heading toward being a technologically induced telepathic species. I'm not kidding with you. That that what's happening here in the early no 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 no, 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 no. okay da 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 the da 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 there you go all right yeah yeah now think about how connected we all are to each other exactly how far from the Borg. How far Not from? Far. We are the Borg. We are a collective. You yeah. are a drone. Right. We, well, aren't young people today that are sitting there, you know, with their, I have <laughs> folks, I have my iPhone in my hand and I'm Just acting very manic. Um, aren't they really at the beginning of this whole telepathic voices in your head? I'm in touch with three of my friends at the same time. I'm in touch well, with you. Well, you're right. You know, well, so, so we are becoming a, a technologically induced telepathic species. I'm not saying we're, we're learning how to be telepathic. We have technology. So we don't made, have to. Right. And how far, how long is it going to be before we have this, the smartphone feels clunky and it's a teeny little, little chip in your brain that you learn how to do a combination of nose twitches or whatever and you beam into wherever you want to be. Bingo. Then you're telepathic. Technologically induced. Advanced. Now, that's what I really think, but I would never say that on the radio. Okay. Well, I'm glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would never say that. I don't want people going, do, 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 you know, and making fun of me. Right. I mean, were yeah. you making fun of me? No, or I was are, not or making are you food. saying to yourself, hey, I think he's right. I think you're all right. I, mean, I think when you look at social media and where we're going, you're absolutely right. Yeah, so that's I, uh, ex- so. Why think, do you? So why are you involved in AM radio? Why am I involved in <laughs> AM radio? Yeah, you want to know the I true story? I want to know the answer. You want to know the true story? Yeah. Okay, here's the true story. Guy that uh, had an AM radio station in our area. Years ago, I had a show, and then the station didn't want it anymore, so we, we did away with it. Guy came in. We had loaned him money and loaned him money and loaned him money in his AM station. He comes in one day. He goes, Jeff, that's my husband. I need to borrow $25,000 or the FCC is going to shut me down. And Jeff looked at him and he goes, Ron, I won't loan you any more money, but I will buy the station from you. Wow, okay. And after he walked out the door, I looked at Jeff and I said, what the hell have you done? And he goes, you're good on the radio. We're going to go back into the radio business. Wow, that's and very that's exciting. how that's okay. how I got that's into a, radio. First of all, it's a great story. Secondly, you did a service for the community because you kept the station alive. It could have gone dark, as yeah. they say, and it sounds to me like you're having a good time. I am having a good so, time. So, so that's very, that's a great story. Yeah, that's really it cool is. Story. And, thank, the, and thank you for your candor and sharing it. Is that the first time people have heard that on the no, air? Oh, okay. No, I've, well. I've told it before, okay. but I didn't think you had heard it. I I heard stories about you, but not that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Well, you know, I think um, as we look at the future of radio, and, you know, we try to incorporate video with it. We do uh, YouTube videos, and we do uh, streaming all the time. We're very involved in the community. We do everything from football. Last week, I was doing a cooking show on the radio. That's great. That's great. When you say you do football, you mean local football? Local football. I think I think that uh, radio misses the boat in most cities by not covering high school and college sports. Even even younger than that, people love that. Oh sure, and, and and it makes stars out of the kids, 
and there's drama and there's personalities and there's so much in the microcosm of a community You're right. that you really can get into and dig into. So I, I understand that and I'm and I'm personal it appeals to the radio guy in me. And it's my It's old time radio. That's yeah. kinda like what we do. Well, old time radio is the only kind of radio, if you think about it. It is. That, and that's the way to do it, and that's the way to keep it alive into the uh, modern era, is to do the great old-school stuff. And, you know, you say you have internet, you have uh, video, and you have all that. That is what I call the media station. Mm -hmm. There's a radio station, and then there's the media station, is the combination of audio, radio, mm -hmm. uh, video, television, uh, graphics, uh, pictures, mm -hmm. uh, text, newspapers, yep. uh, and and then all kinds of other stuff like telephones and mail and, and, and whatever, all in one organized center that has a cultural um, a theme, theme to it mm -hmm. that we call in the business stationality. And that's a media station, and there's no reason why you can't do that out of the station that you own and operate worldwide. But it doesn't have to be that you're now taking on the world as your market. You're the window to the world for Greenwood. And you could make Greenwood an attraction for the world. You follow what I'm saying? Absolutely. As opposed to, okay, now we're broadcasting, uh, hello, Paris. No, 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 no. Uh, we have a very interesting city here. And if a community here. You want to know about it? Tune, Tune in. in. That's a very good point. That's yeah. a very good point because that is actually what they're trying to do in Greenwood is to appeal to a larger market. We're known we're known as a medium tu medium sized tourist market mm -hmm. right there in Greenwood. So we have a lot of business and a lot of things coming in that do this. And one of the things to do in this case is to promote the concept of the medium sized tourist market. Mm -hmm. Not everybody wants to go to Orlando. Not everybody wants to go to Washington, D.C. Not everybody wants to go to New York or L.A. People are seeking places that are human-sized, that have interesting attractions that are educational, that are historic. There's so much stuff in America. There is. And, and the key is to, is to put a frame around what it is you've got, enhance it, make it better so that it puts on its best face, right. and then promote it out there. Uh, and with this, these magnificent channels that we have on the Internet, you can reach people all over the world. And suddenly, can you imagine if uh, Greenwood became a, an attraction that the tourist business doubled and tripled in a few years as a result of that? That's a, that's a worthy goal. That is a worthy goal and, yeah. and something that should be maybe enhanced more with the radio, which we haven't worked with. Well, the radio, the radio is a component in a bigger media um, machine, in a bigger media system. Sure. Yeah, a better word than machine is a system. Right. So I think that, uh, I think that uh, you have every opportunity to do anything you want to do. It's only limited by your own creativity. And energy. It takes a yeah, lot, lot of work. Of it does take a lot oh, of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that, my biggest problem in terms of my ideas and the things that I do is just my own physical limitations of how many hours can I work. I understand that. You know, I put in, um, and, and I'm a very old man. <laughs> and, 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 and I, I... You don't sound like a very old man. <laughs> yeah, but that's why, that's why I'm that's on why radio. That's why you're on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> you have a face for radio, you great, right? You have a great laugh. Yeah. It's very yeah. infectious. <laughs> so, uh, no, but I mean, it's, it, it takes a lot of work to be an entrepreneur. It takes a lot of work to break new ground and to build things. And, uh, of course, the pride that comes with it and the satisfaction that comes with it often makes it worth it. Yeah. I, you know, last week we had the opportunity to interview Nancy Lopez. We have a Symmetra Tour golf tournament, and she was in town, and we sat down and talked to her. Most of my interviews are an hour-long interview. We just do one interview an hour in the afternoon. And um, at the end of the interview... I, I'll go ahead and tell you, Michael. She said she said that my interview with her was better than her interview with Jane Polly. Oh, I would I would imagine that's very possible. Well, that's I mean, possible. I was blown away. Well, you should you should be proud. Yeah, no, your interview with me is even better than your interview with her. So well, uh, well, that, that, okay, uh, there you go. Your, your interview with me is better than the one I had with Barbara Walters. Well, there you go. Now you heard it on the radio. Thank you so much, Michael Harrison. This was not pre-rehearsed or pre-recorded. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, <laughs> this has been 
a real treat to oh, meet you. You're very sweet. I, I appreciate that. And, it, um, fun, you though. know, we didn't even talk about uh, immigration or, or anything along that line. But uh, you know what? It's been a treat to sit down with somebody that's been in the radio business. I certainly hope I could give you a call and maybe talk to you Anytime. again. Anytime. I want to know you. I want to become uh, as connected to your uh, station and community as I possibly can. You, you are a gem. I didn't mean that as a joke. <laughs> I, I, you are. Uh, no question. A special prize. Thank you very much, Michael Harrison. Thank you. I know you have to go. He's with yeah. Talkers Magazine. He founded it. He edits it. He publishes it. He's a, he's a great guy. Thanks so much for being Thank here you. today. Best to you. All right. Let's go ahead and hear a word from our sponsors.